Hello and welcome back to the game development series. In this video, we'll start writing our first script, which will be for the scene generation, all of the uh, bricks that need to be placed. So let's get into it. All right, so first up, what you want to do is we want to open uh, the project. So I've got Brick Breaker demo here. I've opened it up and this is what you'll see. Go into assets and here you should see your scripts folder. So I'm just going to open this entire script uh, folder in VS Code. Uh, that makes it really simple so that whatever scripts I create from here, um, I can just see them directly in VS Code. All right, so I have VS Code open. Let me open this script, which is scenegenerator.cs. We created it from inside Unity right here. So uh, there's two parts to this script. The first part is a start function. The other part is an update function. As you can see in the comment here, uh, it says that start is called before the first frame update. So the start part will be called only once. Whereas the update part is called multiple times. Um, so for example, when we talked about apps versus games, we said that uh, the rendering happens, let's say 60 times every second or based on your frame rate, it could be uh, different. But that's basically what the update function is going to do. The update function is going to be called um, every time, so it's once per frame. So if you have a frame rate of 60 frames per second, that means that the update function is going to be called 60 times every second. So that's the update and start functions. I'm going to get rid of both comments here and um, I'm just going to place the braces as I like it. Uh, you could leave them as they were, there's no problem with that either. Now, what I want to do here is, the first thing is I want to create a game object. So I have a game object, which is, um, let's call it tile. And um, here, what I want to do is I want to make it private. And um, once I make this private, what happens is, uh, let me save this uh, script right here and go to scripts. Uh, I will need to drag drop my script onto the scripts object. So here you can see that uh, it doesn't show anything in the script. Whereas let me go and make this uh, public. So if I make this public right here and save the script, um, we should be able to see uh, a game object right here. So you can see that it says style here and uh, we can actually just drag drop a tile from our prefab itself. So I can drag drop this from here into this. But uh, the problem with that is that I don't want to make my tile public. That's not a good idea. So uh, to get around that, what I do is I make this private and I mention within square brackets, um, I mentioned serialize field. So once I do that, what happens is when I say serialize field, uh, it explicitly tells that to show the tile right here. So once I've done that, you can see that even though it's private, it's still showing up here. So I can now drag drop my prefab from here to here. So uh, that's about serializing in public and private. So next, what I want to do is I want to go into my start function. And uh, what is the X and Y of the first tile that I want? Um, Let's just say that I want to start placing my tiles from a Y of 4. Let me drag a tile here. And the X will be somewhere around minus 10 and the Y will be, uh, let's say, 4. Um, so this is my first tile. So for first tile, the X is 10, Y is 4. I don't really want to uh, just make the 4 uh, fixed value there. So what I'm going to do is I make a private uh, const in um, and let's call this brick underscore y equals four. And uh, now what I do is actually let me also put a private 
um, const int brick underscore x equals 10. So now what I can do is I say for um, int i equals minus brick underscore x i less than or equal to brick underscore x and i plus plus so this is my i loop i will also need a j loop so for int j equals zero to uh, brick underscore rows um, i know i haven't made that yet i will do it right now so i go here and i also make a private const int brick underscore rows uh, let me set it to two for now the reason I want it that way is so that I can change the brick rows anytime I want by quickly just changing the value here. So uh, now I've got j going from uh, 0 to j less than brick underscore rows. And now I can use the instantiate function. So there is a function called instantiate. Let me show you the instantiate function first. So if I do instantiate um, and then I need to give it three arguments. The first one is the game object to instantiate. So I give it a tile. Uh, the second is position. So let me give it a new vector three. So I can't just directly uh, give the position in brackets like this and say that this is the position. I need to create an object of type vector three. So I do that by saying new vector three and then uh, for the object uh, constructor, I need to give it uh, the vector three coordinates. So let me give this a minus 10, comma four, comma zero. And the third argument is the rotation. So uh, whether I want this style rotated by some angle, I can give that as well. Right now, I don't want that. So what I can give is a quaternion dot identity, um, identity and uh, that should work let's try it out so first up let's delete this tile that we have already and now if we run there should be a tile that appears right here so as you can see there is a tile that appears here use and that was created using the instantiate function so that's working pretty well now all we have to do is um, let's uncomment this these loops um, and let's move this line inside of the loop so that those many tiles are created. So now here, what is my x coordinate? My x coordinate is um, just i. My y coordinate would be 4 minus uh, brick underscore rows into 0 0.5. Um, let me tell you why I'm doing that 0 0.5. So here is my first style. Let me place this at minus 10 and 4. And then the next style, the one below it will be at minus 10, comma 3. So you can see that there's quite a gap here. I don't want that much of a gap. So let me move it to 3.5. So this looks perfect, which is why what I want to do is so let's say I'm making the zeroth row of bricks. So when j equals 0, actually this should be a j sorry about that so uh when i have a j equals zero zero times 0 0.5 is just zero so all of those styles will be placed at a j of four next um the next style when j is one that one will be placed at um at j equals one so that one will be placed at four minus 0 0.5 which is uh 3.5 and so on so this should work now and let's see whether this actually constructs all of our tiles let's get rid of both of these tiles first so i'm getting an error here the error is that uh, cannot convert from double to float so what i want to do is this thing is being treated as a double right here so because of the 0 0.5 so i do um, uh, 0.5f and the f stands for that this is a float so this should work now so we can see that in the console the error went away and now if i uh, run my program then it should create all of the tiles as i want 
so you can see that it has beautifully created all of the tiles um, I think there's 20 tiles per row and two rows of tiles you can also try changing the values for the number of uh, the number of tile rows or uh, the brick X brick Y any of those values this should still work so in this video we have written our first script for our game and in the next video what we'll do is we'll uh, start moving the ball and uh, that should be a pretty cool one it's actually uh, very little code uh, but we'll do that in the next video and possibly even the uh, paddle movement based on player input so we'll do that in the next video in the meanwhile you know what to do give this video a like share this playlist with your friends and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already see you next time